What is up YouTube? It is your boy NMR Sports here back with another video and today we're going to be talking about the two moves that were made just now uh, with Marcus Semien signing to the Toronto Blue Jays and JT Romuto heading back to the Philadelphia Phillies. And we're going to talk about what these deals mean for their teams, uh, what this means for the cap situation, all that here in just a second. But if you enjoy the content, be sure to subscribe. We're on the road to a thousand uh, subscribers by opening day. So appreciate all the support so far. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video. Say something in the comments if you want to talk about these teams uh, and how much uh, better they are after making these moves here. I also got a Discord, a Twitch, a uh, podcast, all that other stuff that'll be in the description below. So if you want to follow us on any of that social media, be sure to do that. Now let's get right into the video and talk about these moves. Now, Marcus Semien just signed a one-year deal with the Toronto Blue Jays for $18 million. Now, uh, I believe that is definitely overpaying him just based on his career stats. But if you're going based off what he did in 2019, they might have a really good player on their hands. Now, Marcus Semien has always been terrible defensively. Uh, he actually led the league in errors a few times. From years 2013 to 2018, he was a pretty average, uh, decent baseball player. 2016, he had 27 home runs. So that was kind of the highlight of his career there. Uh, he never hit more than 15 other than that season. Uh, he typically batted around 260 to the high point being 255 up until that point. He never had an OPS plus over 100, and his OPS was usually about league average around 700. Now, 2019, if they're getting 2019 Marcus Semien, uh, they are getting an absolute stud ball player. 2019, he finished third in MVP voting, which is the only accolade he has on his resume. No gold gloves, no silver sluggers. Third place in MVP voting in 2019, uh, second to Alex Bregman and Mike Trout, of course. Uh, the numbers in 2019 were ridiculous. He had a 139 OPS, which is more than 39% better than league average and 39% better than any other OPS plus he had in his entire career up into that point. He batted 285, hit 33 home runs, and played in all 162 games. Uh, now that I will say something about that, to his reliability has been nice his whole career. Uh, he has had injuries in two seasons. The three seasons he's been healthy for, he's played over 155 games. So he's definitely a reliable option for the Blue Jays in the infield, but I really don't know what they're going to do next year. Because obviously, Rowdy Tellez had a pretty good season last year. Bo Bichette's amazing. Kevin Biggio is a young stud. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is a young stud. None of them can play catcher, and their outfield's already stacked. So I really don't know. I guess Rowdy Telez might be a trade chip to maybe trade for a guy like Kyle Hendricks later on. Obviously, the rumors were Chris Bryant uh, to the Blue Jays. Chris Bryant and Kyle Hendricks was kind of the rumor going around. But after this move signing uh, Marcus Semien, I really don't see the Blue Jays going out and getting Chris Bryant. So I don't know if they're still in the market for a pitcher. Maybe Rowdy Telez will be a trade chip for that. Um, or maybe they go after a catcher in Wilson Contreras and Kyle Hendricks. That could be an option for sure. Uh, so the Blue Jays are definitely cooking something up. I'm not really sure what the plan is right now, but I'm sure they have more than just signing Marcus Simeon. Uh, so I would rate this as a very interesting move, uh, to say the least. And I didn't even go over his 2020 stats. His 2020 stats were atrocious. He played in 53 games. He had a 223 batting average. He had seven home runs. So the power was decent there. He slugged 374. He had an OPS of 679, which is below league average, and a 91 OPS plus. Um, so realistically speaking, do I think Marcus Simeon is an absolute stud? No, but he shows that he has potential like he did in 2019. Uh, so I really don't think $18 million is worth Mark. I don't think he's worth $18 million. But he could be a solid ball player for the Toronto Blue Jays next year. Now, the Marcus Simeon signing wasn't the only signing that happened uh, today. Unfortunately for me as a content creator, JT Romuto re-signed with the Philadelphia Phillies. So kind of a boring move. Uh, it's kind of weird seeing a fourth place team in the Philadelphia Phillies, which probably would have been a fifth place team if it wasn't for this signing. Went out and signed their guy, JT Romuto. Obviously, Bryce Harper is a big fan of this guy. Uh, so it's good to have Bryce Harper get some friends in his lineup there. They still have a cracked lineup. I just would love to see them go out and get some pitching. It is kind of weird because they were crying poor at the beginning of the offseason, like they didn't have the money to sign some of these guys, but then they go out and shell out this kind of money to JT Romuto, which I didn't even mention the deal was five years for $155.5 million, so an AAV around $26 million or so if I'm uh, doing my math correctly there. Uh, so JT Romuto, definitely worth the money in my opinion. He has been an absolute stud for the last three years, uh, 2018 and 2019. Let's see, 2018 with the Miami Marlins, he had an all-star selection and he won a silver slugger. In 2019 with the Phillies, he was an all-star. He finished 14th in the MVP voting as a catcher. 
He had a gold glove and a silver slugger. So if you have gold glover and a silver slugger, it just means you're an absolutely dominant catcher and you're probably the best catcher in the league, which JT Romuto pretty clearly is right now. I mean, Yasmani Grandal seem to make up that top tier of catchers and it's not really anybody else that's close to them. Uh, so I definitely think this was a good signing for the Philadelphia Phillies, but I don't think they're a contender next year. So it's uh, good to have their guy. They have people that are going to be fun to watch. If you're going to any Phillies games, maybe put butts in the seats, try to make them some money. Uh, but at the end of the day, I still think they're a fourth place team unless they go out and get some pitching. Uh, so we'll have to see. They did add Ar Archie Bradley this offseason, of course. Uh, and they still have a decent rotation with Zach Wheeler and Aaron Nola being at the top of it. Uh, so we'll have to see. Maybe the Phillies could make some noise the rest of the offseason. Like I made in my last video, there's a lot of free agent relievers still available. So if they want to get a good bullpen, uh, they probably wouldn't have to shell out too much money for it. So yeah, so we'll have to see. I like this move for the Philadelphia Phillies, but I still think they're a fourth place team. Now, right when I was about to upload this video, I had to go get my Minnesota Vikings hat because I just had some breaking news. Anderton Simmons has been, or, uh, sorry, signed by the Minnesota Twins. Now, Anderton Simmons, of course, is known for his defense mainly, but he's also uh, pretty decent with the bat. He's not really great in any metrics, except for the fact that he does not strike out a lot. And the Twins, of course, do strike out quite a bit. They are known for their power, not really for their contact. Simmons is definitely a big contact guy. He's not going to blow you away with a bunch of home runs or anything, but he puts the ball in play, which can be very helpful for a team like the Twins, uh, who maybe need some people on base. He is 95th percentile in strikeout percentage and 93rd percentile in whiff percentage. So he definitely makes a lot of contact with the ball. And of course, he's known for that defense. He'll make some insane plays out there, which could help them with some defense behind their pitching, uh, which could be very helpful, especially in the postseason. They can maybe win the game next year. I don't think this is the only move the Twins have to make. They still got to go out and sign another bat. Probably Nelson Cruz would be a great fit for them to come back. And they could probably use a little bit of starting pitching, maybe even some bullpen help. So the Twins, uh, I like this move a lot for them. One year, $10 million deal, $10.5 million deal, sorry. Uh, Anderton Simmons, pretty good fit for him. Obviously, a uh, former Angel now. I really liked him when his time with the Angels. Um, yeah, very good defensively, not amazing offensively, though. Now, this is the last clip I'm going to add to this video. You see I have my glasses on, I have my hat on, I'm sweaty, I'm tired. The stove is flaming hot right now. Tommy LaStella has been rumored to be going to the San Francisco Giants. Uh, I don't know what the contract details or anything are, so I'll put it in the description of the comments once I know it. Um, in the last two seasons, Tommy Lestella has actually been very, very good. His whole year, he's been a utility guy, so he's never played more than uh, one season. Sorry, he played 123 games. Other than that, he's never played more than 93 games in a season. In 2019, he was having a stellar year for the Angels until he broke his leg. He made the All-Star team batting 295 with a 486 slugging percentage, and he had 16 home runs in his first 80 games. Uh, so he was an absolute stud for the Angels in 2019. And then 2020, he got off to a hot start and actually had a really good season with an OPS, uh, posting an OPS plus of 127 last year. So he's been very, very good the last two years. I don't know if he can keep that up per se, uh, but he has shown that he has been uh, very good the last two years. So we'll see what kind of guy they're going to be getting in the Giants. I'm probably not going to put any clips of Tommy Lestell on here. Eh, maybe I will. Uh, but yeah, Tommy Lestell, definitely a good guy to have around the clubhouse, especially with the young guys over there in San Francisco. I don't think they're going to compete with the Dodgers or Padres or anything, but I like this move for the clubhouse. Now, in other unfortunate news, nobody was elected to the 2021 Baseball Hall of Fame class. Uh, so this is kind of interesting. There weren't any standout names on the ballot like there have been in years past, like Derek Jeter or Mariano Rivera or Ken Griffey Jr., stuff like that. Uh, so this year was kind of a wild card. I honestly thought that Barry Bonds and Kurt Schilling really had a chance to get in this season. But surprisingly, Barry Bonds wasn't even a top vote getter. It was Kurt Schilling who got 71% of the votes. Uh, now, like him or not, uh, you need the 75% threshold to get into the Hall of Fame. He got to 71%. He was very, very close. Uh, but it really doesn't look like the Hall of Fame guys, uh, the, the Writers Association is ready to let these guys who uh, use performance enhancing drugs into the Hall of Fame. Uh, it's kind of weird. I feel like it should be... Uh, it's tough. My personal opinion is Barry Bonds and Kurt Schilling are too good to not be in the Hall of Fame on the field. I don't really, uh, at the end of the day, especially when they were in the league, everyone was using steroids and Barry Bonds still went out and hit 10, 15 more home runs than ever, anybody else was every year. Uh, he still was the scariest hitter in all of baseball for so many years. He's an absolute stud. I think he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame and Kurt Schilling was an absolutely dominant pitcher. Um, and I do think it was kind of an equal playing field for them at the time. And they were still able to elevate themselves. Um, obviously nowadays, if someone does steroids, it's definitely not an even playing field because of everybody doing it legitimately. But I think for the time that they played in, I think it should be, um, 
I don't know. I think that Barry Bonds and Kurt Schilling are kind of the exception, not the rule. So we'll definitely have to see what happens in the next few years. Uh, some other notable votes were Scott Rowland ended up with 52% of the vote. Omar Vizquel got 49%. Uh, Billy Wagner only got 46%. And Todd Helton had 44%. I'll put this uh, metric up on the screen here so you can see it. Uh, so kind of a bad day for baseball with nobody being elected into the Hall of Fame. Uh, it's going to be a weird 2021 for baseball. They also came out and say that the DH isn't going to be a thing in the National League next year. No expanded playoffs. Baseball is kind of in a weird spot right now. I'm hoping as content creators, some of us can bring a little bit more light to the situation, maybe make some cool edits and uh, have more interactive thing. I'm actually working on a project right now with some MLB players uh, to get that out to you guys. So uh, hopefully we get some cool news in the future that's a little bit more bright for the game of baseball. But for now, unfortunately, uh, not the best look for baseball with nobody getting elected to the 2021 Hall of Fame class. Now, before we end the video, I do just want to look at Barry Bonds' baseball reference page. I'm going to put it up on the screen right here. Look at this thing. Just look at it. Seven MVPs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight gold gloves. I'm not even going to count the amount of silver sluggers on here. Uh, my man had a 1422 OPS in 2004. It's just unreal, man. Absolutely unreal. One of the greatest players of all time. He deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. I know steroids are a big issue nowadays, but realistically speaking, with the competitive level that everybody else was at around him, I think uh, it's fair to say that even without steroids, Barry Bonds would still probably be a Hall of Famer. Uh, so take what you want with that. Uh, that is going to be it for us here today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you guys for all the support. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you enjoy the content. And I will see you guys in the next video.